Hey, what's up everybody? So this is just a quick video. Uh, a student had noticed that some of the syllabus content for Colt Steel's Web Developer Bootcamp was outdated uh, in relation to some of the new content that had actually been put out recently in the course content. So I thought, okay, great, I'll just go update that document with the, you know, what the latest sections are. But that would require me to go through and have to just rewrite some stuff. Um, which honestly, with there only being a couple new sections, it probably wouldn't take very long to do that. But I wanted to do it the systematic, you know, programmatic computer way, the nerd way. <laughs> so that's kind of like, that, that's always my instinct, like my go-to. So I went to the content page, the course content for, and this is the new UI. I don't know if many of you can see this yet or not. Um, this is what Udemy is migrating to. So they have like the video, and then on the right hand side, um, in the default view or whatever, they'll have all the lectures. And then below that, they'll have the question if you're in the QA or, you know, whatever. All right, so we have the course content right here. And it has, at the for each section, it's got the section, number, and then the title for the section. So if you could use JavaScript to read the DOM, you could pull that information out and have it you know, show up for you automatically and then just copy and paste and you'll have an up-to-date version of the syllabus basically because all the syllabus is is an, uh, it's just an outline of the sections. What I did is I opened up the Chrome console which I already have open here and I used let's see here I used jQuery not outdated. Yes it is. No it's not. Yes it is. No it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Right here, I'm getting the sections. So like section one, section two, et cetera. And now if I look at sections, here I have 42 sections. There are 42 sections in the course. I think there's 41 sections. So there's probably an extra one that's not published. Now I have the sections, that's great. And I want to get the titles for each of the sections. So here's the selector for the titles. And so if I look at that, there's all the titles. So that's the actual element, right? And I want to get the information from inside the element. So if you look at the sections and you go to the first one, index of zero, and you look at like the text content, then you can see it says section one. All right, so how do I turn this array of each of those DOM elements into the text from the DOM element? Pretty simple. Um, definitely one of my favorite parts of JavaScript is using this method right here. So it'd be like sections is equal to sections and then we want to convert it to an array because it's a jQuery object, which looks like an array, but it's not exactly an array. Or it's an array of jQuery objects anyway. So we convert it to a regular JavaScript array first. That way we can run dot map on it. And then I'm going to use some newer syntax. So if you're not familiar with this, I'll just try to explain it as I'm going. So for each element in the array, we're going to call it a section. So it's a sections array, plural. For each element, it's a section. For each of those sections, we have we run a function. And so I'm not gonna open and close brackets or anything, it's just gonna happen on one line. And we're going to implicitly return the text content for that section. It's really simple. So we just do section dot text content, if I can spell. Cool. And so if this works, fingers crossed, then sections, and it just returned it automatically, sections is going to now be an array of 42 section titles. So those are the section numbers. Now I need the section titles. So I'll say titles is equal to, and then similar thing here, just to array dot map title for each title. In this case, I'm getting the inner text because for whatever reason, text content was returning an extra couple of dots at the end. I don't know why it's formatted like that. So I just use inner text instead of text content for this one. And you can see I get all of the titles for these 42 sections. All right, now here's the fun part. Yes. I wanna take this information and I want to automatically dump it onto the page so I can just copy and paste it, right? So we can iterate over sections, which is now an array, with a for each function. And so for each section, and because I'm having multiple arguments, I'm actually gonna wrap that in parens, you have to. And so inside of there, for each of those, just ignore that. For each of those sections, we get this section, which is the section one, section two, and then we get the index for it. And the reason I'm getting the index is because 
there's the same number of elements inside the titles array and I want information from the titles array. So instead of doing a separate loop or whatever, I'm just gonna use that index for the titles, for the sections element and then apply it to the titles array and it'll give me the corresponding title for that section. All right, lots of words, kind of confusing. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Our pet's heads are falling off! So we're gonna do document.write and so this is just gonna output it to the page here. And we'll do a double back ticks and put in some, uh, what do they call this stuff, template literals. And then inside the first one, I'm just gonna put in the section and that's gonna give me section one and that's gonna iterate to the next one, section two and so on. And now I'll put a colon. So section one is pointing to and now we'll put the title. And so inside of here, instead of saying title because we don't have access to a variable title, but we do have access to the uh, index and the index for section one is going to correspond with the title for section one. So we can just access titles and then put in I for the index and it'll give us introduction to this course, which is the title that corresponds to section one. So if this works and I hit enter, it'll do that. Now, that's not gonna be copy and pasteable unless, oh, it could be, but then I'd have to go in and put new, new line breaks. So at the end of this string, I'll just put HTML BR tag and it'll do breaks for me. So it appends it on top of that previous stuff. You can ignore that. Uh, if I refresh the page and do it, how I should have done it from the beginning, then, and I probably have to reassign these variables because if I try it now, it's not going to work. Let's see if I can do that really quick. And then finally, we're gonna write it to the document. So there, it's really clean now. You can close the terminal. So it's exactly how I want it. I can copy it and I can go over to my Word document, paste it in, save it as a PDF, and then boom, we have an up-to-date syllabus outline, course outline. So that's great. Uh, it was kind of fun. And I do stuff like this all the time. Like, like I mentioned in this scenario, not entirely necessary because I could have just gone and figured out, okay, section eight and section nine are new and then plug them in and then whatever else wasn't there. But that's not the point. This is something that I do all the time is I use client side JavaScript or whatever tool is the right tool for the job, whatever language, sometimes Python or sometimes you know Node on the back end. But I use programming to solve simple things like this. So always be thinking about, especially if you're, well, whether or not you're in a programming role already or you're doing something else that involves computers, always be thinking about like, is there a way that I can do this really quickly and easily? For instance, this year when I was doing my taxes, I needed to get like a ton of information from different places for my finances and aggregate it all together and then sort through it and figure out, you know, this goes there, this is a write-off, blah, blah. And I ended up having some websites where I was trying to get information from and their UI and their exporting stuff wasn't that great. What I did is I resorted to using client-side JavaScript and I just pulled the information from the DOM, basically scraped the DOM for the data that I needed and then I put it into like, you know, a CSV or a, a whatever. Always fun to do stuff like this. If you've done something like this, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, but I just made this video to kind of show you that you can use JavaScript for more than just making websites. You can use it as a tool to make your life easier. And barring the fact that this could probably be done this particular task manually in the same amount of time or less, it's still fun to, you know, kind of branch off and do something like this. Yeah, if you have any questions or comments or any stories about things similar that you've done in your uh, job or some personal projects, love to hear about it. In any event, taking up enough of your time now. Uh, thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video.